Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and to another video. In today's video, we are going to look at the Linux tree. So we are going to look at all Linux distributions in a tree. It's an image that you will find on the internet. And of course, I will leave a link to it in the video description below. And we will see all Linux distributions and where they are based from. We will clear up a little bit the difference between the Linux kernel and the GNU Linux operating system. And then we will also have an overview of the packaging systems of the distributions. So let's jump right into the video. So here we are on my desktop and let's have a look at the Linux distributions available today. So let me pull up here one tab which I already prepared. This is coming from Wikipedia. You can search in Google Linux distro list and you'll come up here with this uh, graphic. And this is basically the Linux distributions available today starting from 1992 until 2020. This is going to be updated, of course, every year. And let's start here from the top. We'll see here it says timeline of the GNU slash Linux distributions. Well, you might think, okay, well, these are all the Linux distro, right? Well, yes and no. So just to clear up a little bit of confusion here, what is the difference between GNU, Linux, and what is the difference between a distribution and Linux? So Linux is actually the kernel of the OS. So the kernel is basically the core of the system, which can communicate to hardware and also other software. Now we know Linux as an OS, but technically speaking, Linux is actually the kernel of the operating system. So what actually is GNU Linux? Well, let's have a look, shall we? So let's open up a new tab here and type it in here, GNU Linux. Choose the first link here. And we are brought to the GNU.org website. So this is an article written by Richard Stallman explaining actually what the GNU system is and what actually Linux is. So I'm not going to read through everything here. You can do this yourself if you want to. So as it says here, Linux is the kernel, the program in the system that allocates the machine's resources to other programs that you run. The kernel is an essential part of an operating system, but useless by itself. It can only function in the context of a complete operating system. Linux is normally used in a combination with the GNU operating system. The whole system is basically GNU with Linux added. So what is the GNU system? Well, we have a link here so we can click on it. So the GNU operating system is an operating system which is Unix-like and uses only free software. Now, what is interesting here, if you see this paragraph, it says the first test release of the complete GNU system was in 1996. This includes the GNU herd our kernel, so the kernel of the GNU operating system, which was developed since the 1990s. Now, in 2001, the GNU system, including its kernel, began working fairly reliably, but the herd, which is again the GNU original kernel, still lacks some important features, so it is not widely used. Meanwhile, the GNU Linux system, which is an offshoot of the GNU operating system, which uses Linux as the kernel, as we spoke before, instead of the GNU herd, has been a great success since 1990s. So what is basically saying here, it's that Linux is the kernel and the GNU Linux is the operating system from where other distributions are coming from. So let's go back to our tree here. And so what we see here, we see all Linux distributions or GNU Linux distributions. To avoid the confusion, Linux, again, is just the kernel of the operating system. These are basically distribution based on the GNU Linux system. So having cleared that, we can see here what happens. So let's scroll down here shortly. And the first distribution we have, the first big distribution we have here on the left side is Debian. So Debian is one of the main mother distributions. And as you can see, we have tons of distributions spawning from Debian. Of course, one of the most popular ones, if we follow along this orange line and we go up here, I'll try to scroll in so that you can see better. It's, as you can see here, Ubuntu. Now, from Ubuntu itself, we have also a lot of distribution spawning from that. We have, for example, Elementary OS, which is today very popular. We have Zorin OS, which is also very popular. We have other distributions like Ubuntu Mate, all the variants of Ubuntu, of course. We have KDE Neon. We have also down here Linux Mint, which is, of course, very popular. We have also Linux Lite up here. And also one of the latest distributions is also Pop OS, which is also very popular today. So as you can see, what does it mean here? It means all these distributions that are spawning from Ubuntu are based on Ubuntu itself. 
but Ubuntu itself is actually based on Debian. So what does it mean? It means actually all these distributions are using basically the same packaging system, which is the apt or aptitude packaging system. So whenever you update a package or the system in Debian, you're normally using a command called apt. So for example, it's gonna be like apt update or apt upgrade. And this is true for Debian, but it's true for all these other distributions because they are all based on Debian. And the same goes also for Ubuntu. Because Ubuntu is based on Debian, you'll be upgrading packages like that. Now this is incredible because we have tons of distributions here which are based on one mother distribution but if we go down this tree we see many others. We have another mother distribution here which is Slackware. So from Slackware you can see already here we have also tons of distributions spawning. Not as many as Debian but still many of those. And one of the ones actually which stands out here on the bottom is SUSE which at the beginning was S-U-S-C, -S then became SUSE, and then became OpenSUSE nowadays. And this, of course, uses also another system for packaging software. So the same what we saw before with Debian applies also here with these distributions. So all these distributions are based on Slackware, and they use, of course, their own packaging system. Now, if we go down again the line here, we see another biggie, which is Red Hat. They are actually selling the support to their Linux version. But we have also here some interesting spawning distributions. One of them is CentOS. So CentOS is basically RHEL or Red Hat Linux Enterprise, stripped down of the branding, of course, and all of the support. So you have basically the same operating system, but it's just called CentOS. We have also another one which is very popular, which is Fedora. Fedora is actually a community distribution which is supported by Red Hat. And actually Red Hat nowadays uses Fedora as a testbed for the latest technology in free software or open source software. And some of these technologies will also of course land into Red Hat in the future. Now Red Hat of course uses also its own packaging system. The package manager normally by Red Hat is YAM or by Fedora DNF, which is probably going to be adopted in Red Hat maybe later in time. Now let's go down the line here. We have another big one, which is Gen2. Gen2 actually derived from Enoch. And from Gen2, we have also many distributions spawning. Gen2 also uses its own system for packaging software, which is called Emerge. And as you can see here, one of the big names is Chrome OS. Chrome OS is spawning from this distribution, as well as Chromium OS. Going down the list, also we have Arch. So Arch, of course, has its own way of packaging system, as you probably already know, which is Pac-Man. From this distribution here, from the Arch Linux distribution, we have also many popular ones. We have Manjaro, which is extremely popular. We have also Antergos. We have also Arch Labs. We have also Black Arch here. We have also Parabola. And we have also one of the newest ones, which is Arch Linux, deriving from Arch Merge. So as you can see here, we have main distributions, the mother distributions, from where other distributions are spawning. And each mother distribution has its own packaging system, meaning all spawning distributions, of course, are using the same packaging system. Now, let me search for something here on this graph. I'll search for Android, which is down here. So Android here is listed basically as its own distribution. So Android, as you can see on the timeline, began in 2007. So Android is basically using the Linux kernel for its operating system and then built everything else for mobile devices. And we have from here, of course, also Wear OS, which is meant to be for wearables. But there is another system actually I would like to show you as well. Let me search for this. And it's called Tizen. Now, Tizen is actually a derivative of Fedora Core. Now, some years ago, we had an operating system called Migo, which was used on mobile devices. Now it's spawned into Tizen. You might know this system if you have a Samsung wearable. If you have a Galaxy Watch, for example, it's using the Tizen system. So Tizen derives actually from Fedora, which derives from Red Hat, and it uses the Linux kernel. So if you think about it, we have Android, which is using the Linux kernel. We have Tizen also, which is using the Linux kernel. So it means nowadays we have billions of devices running on a Linux kernel. So let me close this up and I'll scroll back up here and scroll out one time. So again, this is the whole tree. I encourage you to explore this because it's a very interesting tree and it really shows you the whole Linux world today, how it's built and how it's structured. The only thing which be always a little bit confusing is that we have here these GNU Linux distributions. So again, GNU Linux is actually an operating system based on the Linux kernel. GNU, as we saw before, actually has its own kernel, which is the herd kernel. But there is also a variant of the GNU system with the 
Linux kernel. And all these distributions here are basically coming from the new Linux operating system. Now, if you're new to Linux and you're interested in learning more, this is good to know and to explore this tree is very important because later on the road, if you decide to learn more about Linux, you will see, as I said also in my previous video, that it's more important probably for you to know how packages are working, how the system is working, how software is packaged in the system more than the graphical environment itself, because you can basically make Linux look like the way you want to anyway. So if you are interested in that, you will find with time that you might prefer having an Arch-based distribution instead of a Debian-based distribution, if you prefer that. If you prefer to have a Debian-based distribution because it's using snaps, then you will learn that in time and you will stick with those distributions. And then you can search the distribution you like and you can use that. If you want, on the other side, if you really want to learn the Linux operating system on a technical standpoint and you want to build the installation yourself, you might go into something like Arch Linux or in Gen 2, which are a little bit more difficult because you need to build everything from scratch. Only difference is there is that Gen 2 builds from source and Arch Linux builds from binaries. But they are both great distributions and they give you full control of the operating system. Now, if you are not interested in learning Linux and it really doesn't matter, you just want to have an operating system which works, we are going to use in the next videos a distribution which is actually Debian based, which is Linux Lite, which is my choice for new users. Linux Mint is also one, and I really love Linux Mint as well, but in my experience, I found actually Linux Lite a little bit easier for new users to try Linux for the first time, and I will show you how you can then export data from your old OS and import it in Linux Lite and use it on your new Linux installation. So I encourage you to explore this tree. It's very, very interesting to see how it's structured and which distribution are spawning from the main distributions or from distribution which are spawning from forks of the main distributions like Ubuntu, for example. And let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Let's have a discussion also with the community. I think it's a very interesting topic and it's interesting also because it evolves with time and next year we'll surely have some other things in here and we can explore it again uh, when new distributions are there. So for now, I thank you for watching this video, guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can also support the channel by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal to our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you very, very soon in the next one. Bye.